If you watch my videos on a regular basis then you'll know that recently I acquired a number of these Kumkin KP184 electronic loads. Uh, I needed quite a few of these for various projects I've got uh, coming up and I need to test quite a number of fairly high power power supplies for lengthy periods of time so firstly I didn't want the power supplies on test in my uh, main lab. Uh, but also I needed to test quite a few different uh, rails on them at the same time so I searched around and found a, a reasonable electronic load at a reasonable cost and I bought one, tested it, so I posted several videos on it and uh, how it performs and because it met the purpose I wanted to put it to I've bought uh, quite a few more I didn't buy them from the same source, I got these direct from uh, a Chinese import company uh, got them much uh, lower cost exactly the same unit though um, the original one I bought is the one on the right uh, the two most recent ones are the uh, ones on the left and I have bought some more but because um, as I always say with uh, cheap Chinese equipment it's fundamentally potentially good but it does need carefully testing whenever you get it uh, and this video is really to uh, qualify that statement and show what I found when I was testing these units. Even with a, uh, a unit like a Rigol I always fully test it before I put it into use. There's always a chance something happened to it in transit or it may not have been manufactured correctly and because the type of equipment I tend to work on is irreplaceable or extremely expensive or difficult to repair um, I have to be very careful in the way I approach the repairs for it. Uh, and that's especially true considering the vast majority of it is not mine. So I, go, I tend to go through things like this very carefully. It's actually quite rare for me to find anything wrong with it and sometimes it's quite difficult to identify faults even if they exist. Uh, so I thought I'd show a fault I'd found with one of these three units and as I'm going through, I'm not going to say what it is to start with, um, as we go through uh, as soon as you think you know what it is, uh, leave a comment. But um, I've got all these three set the same way. This is the, the first part of the testing I do on these. So I've got them all set the same. They're on constant resistance, set to 50 ohms. I haven't turned the beepers off on the new ones. That's how I know that uh, I finished testing them. I turn the beeper off as the last step. So if they're still beeping, I know they're not tested. Um, so they're all set to exactly the same constant resistance, 50 ohms. I've got the two on the outside, the right hand one is connected to channel two on the Rigol and the left hand unit is connected to channel one on the Rigol and uh, the centre one currently as you can see is not connected to anything. I've got both channels on the Rigol set the same, 10 volts uh, with 0.5 amp current limit, the same with channel two, uh, channel three I'm not using. And what I'll do now is uh, turn the two uh, channels on and you can see that on the uh, electronic loads I'm getting 10 volts showing, no current of course because the load is not switched on, uh, the input's not switched on, and um, similar sort of voltage on the, the first unit. The discrepancy is obviously just uh, calibration differences. And that's fine, that's what it should be doing. If I turn them both on then we can see we're drawing about uh, 200 milliamps on both of them which is correct um, 50 ohms uh, with 10 volts across it so they're fine and we're seeing the same thing on the um, power supply and because on the Rigol uh, channel 1 is floating relative to channels 2 and 3 the ground on channel 2 and or the, the negative on channel 2 and 3 are, are, are wired together um, but while channel 2 are floating with respect to uh, mains earth um, it's, a, it's a completely separate supply for channel 1 so channel 1 is floating, channel 2 and 3 are floating but channel 2 and 3 are tied together uh, that means that what I should be able to do is take the mains reference ground which is what I have this now plugged to on the Rigol so this uh, green terminal on the Rigol is connected to uh, mains earth ground. I, can, I should now be able to connect this to any of uh, these pins uh, without anything bad happening. It just means that the supplies will then be referenced to ground but only one of them because 
these two supplies are floating, which means that uh, the two supplies fed to the loads are floating. So if I connect it to this one, nothing really can be seen to be happening, except that we're now referencing uh, negative on this load to ground. I can do the same thing with the uh, positive terminal. I can do the same thing with this one. And I can do the same thing with this one. So that's all fine, that's exactly what you'd expect. Two floating supplies feeding two floating electronic loads and I can uh, ground earth reference at any of them. Uh, however, if I now transfer these terminals from either one, doesn't really matter, to the middle load, I'll turn this one off, I'll turn this one on. So it all seems fine, we're still drawing 200 milliamps, 200 milliamps on both loads, all looks fine. Uh, until I bring my ground reference in. If I connect it to this one, notice again nothing really happens, still 200 milliamps, I can put it onto here, still exactly the same. However if I put it onto this one, this terminal, you can see we've maxed out at half an amp, put it on this terminal, nothing, it's, it's fine. So there's obviously something wrong with this load. If I turn the input off, nothing changes, we're still drawing half an amp, if I disconnect it's fine. Uh, so there's something wrong with this load, I need to take it apart and find out what it is. I could send it back of course, but shipping this back to China and the chance of getting it replaced is fairly remote. I didn't pay a great deal for them. I don't think the company I bought it from is selling dodgy units, I think they're all the same. This is just unfortunate, this one has a, a fault. And I think it's actually the positive terminal that's connected to um, earth reference, otherwise we'd get a high current flowing when I plug it into this terminal. And I don't, I get it when I plug it into this one. So, so I think it's actually the positive terminal that is connected to uh, earth ground reference. So I'll turn it all off and we'll get the test meter and uh, see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, so this is the unit I think we have an issue with. I'll get the test meter and we'll do a few measurements and see if um, the positive terminal is indeed connected to uh, mains ground reference. So I'll connect to the uh, ground pin on the main socket. Um, as we can see, there is indeed a dead short. If I go to the negative terminal on the front, there's nothing, but the positive terminal is a, a very firm connection to uh, Earth ground reference. So I'll take the cover off, we'll have a look inside and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, I have all the screws removed. Um, notice we've got a quality inspection sticker here, dated the 20th of the 1st, uh, it looks like 19. Um, so I'm not quite sure uh, where this has been for the last year. Or maybe they just uh, got the date wrong when they filled this in. Uh, either way, as I've said previously, these stickers aren't really worth uh, the paper that they're printed on. So I'll destroy my warranty and I will get the cover off and see if we can figure out why the uh, positive pin is connected to uh, ground. Okay, so what I'll do is just unplug these to make sure that we haven't got remote terminal connected wrong. Get the meter back in. And we'll test it again. No, the short's still there, so I'll pop these back in. I can't see anything obvious at the moment as to why we have a dead short. So what I'm going to have to do is start disconnecting things until we find out where the problem is. So this is our positive terminal. Mm, 
And somewhat oddly, it's connected to this. Okay, so I'm suspecting that what's happened here is this has been dropped and we can see this transformer is bent right over and it's pressing very hard against this screw. So I'm suspecting the short is actually at this screw head. So I'll just get the meter out and see if we are measuring something between those two. And I'll just bring the meter in so you can see it. Okay, I'll just try pulling the transformer away and see if that gets rid of the short. And it does. So it looks like it's a mechanical issue. It's, uh, it's been dropped on, uh, on the way here. This transformer's bent over and um, the screw head coming through the power device that's um, also connected to um, this heat sink which is in turn, for some bizarre reason, connected to the uh, positive terminal on this uh, PCB. Uh, is obviously shorting out to ground, this uh, transformer of course being grounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop the transformer out, straighten the uh, mounting brackets uh, bent up here, you probably can't see it. Um, I'll put it back in and then we'll rerun the test and see if we've uh, cleared the fault. Okay, I've got the transformer out of the load. I had to pop the uh, bottom plate off to get it out. There wasn't enough space to get it through the gap. Um, while I've had it out, I've straightened the uh, two uh, mounting ears and I've also put a thick layer of uh, high temperature insulation on the top just to make sure it can't happen again. This is the same insulation that uh, I use uh, on transformers and I've held that down with some um, good quality tape. So that's uh, not going to short out again, even if it gets dropped. I've checked to make sure there's no other damage down there. It's just uh, luckily just hit the screw. It doesn't seem to have done any damage to anything else. Uh, there's no damage to the transformer. So I'll pop this back in, reassemble the load, and we'll give it another test. So I've got the transformer fitted back in. Um, it's now nice and solid, so it's not going to move, but just in case, it's got some insulation on top. The other thing I've done is uh, I was quite surprised that these are actually connected directly to the uh, positive um, terminal because this is a 150 volt load so this could have 150 volts on it. So what I've done as well is just put an insulation pad on each side of the heatsink and uh, because this is so close to the outer panel when this is on course this is grounded and uh, there's only a few mil gaps so if you were to squeeze the load hard enough um, there is a, a potential for shorting out on the inside of the case. So by putting a, a pad on the inside like this, it'll prevent it from doing that. Um, you won't be able to push the, uh, the metal side in hard enough. This isn't connected to anything, I'll, I'll check that. And uh, it's just these two pieces that are uh, connected to the, um, the high voltage. So I've tested all the rest of it, it all looks fine. I can't find anything else that's in danger of shorting out. So I will now put the outer cover on. Uh, and then we'll get on and uh, retest it. Before I took the cover off this, I was poking fun at this uh, label. Uh, I still think they're pointless, but um, I, I would say here that chances are this did work when it was tested in the factory. I'm fairly confident that this damage occurred in uh, shipping. Um, I still don't trust these, but um, whoever tested it, uh, if it was tested, uh, I'm pretty sure that um, it probably worked at the time. Okay, we'll get it tested. I've got them set up exactly as I had them in the first test. I have checked this with the multimeter of course, but we'll just run it through a final check anyway. I'll turn on the two supplies. Uh, they're connected as they were before to the uh, two outer um, electronic loads and they're reading fine. I can take our ground earth reference lead, I can plug it into any terminal and we don't get any uh, high currents flowing. Turn them both on. Do the same test again. 
and you can see we're still not getting any issues. I'll move the terminals to the middle load and we'll test again and see if the problem has gone away. So I'll try it on the negative terminal, that's fine, on the positive, and that's fine. So as you can see the problem's gone away, it was just the transformer was shorted out. Um, so it's well worth checking if you get one of these. In the first one I had, if you did see the video, the transformer was loose and in this one it's uh, canted over. This third one's actually fine, I have looked, um, but these two potentially had an issue. So that's two out of three, um, so if you do get one it's well worth checking that. If it's happened on one, almost certainly it can happen on another one. And if you do happen to fall foul of uh, shorting something out, then it, uh, it could ruin your whole day. So it is well worth spending five minutes just checking that.